Hey guys, it's Smudge here. Um, we're back, kind of. I always say that. I don't know why I say that. We're back anyway, um, and we're going to be taking a look at the Kristen Eagle Two. Um, now, the Kristen Eagle Two has been met with um, kind of mixed feelings into DCS. Um, now, of course, DCS stands for Digital Combat Simulator, and this is the first aircraft to come into DCS that is uh, a pure civilian uh, kind of aerobatic and air racing aircraft. Uh, so I just really wanted to share my thoughts on the introduction of this into DCS um, and talk about the aircraft itself, kind of go through its features, what it's like to fly and, and stuff like that and um, yeah, just kind of share my feelings about it. So uh, starting off, um, it is quite a, a good looking plane really. Um, it's based on the Pit Special or it was built as a, a rival to the, the Pit Special. Uh, so it is a a kind of uh, biplane design as you can see, uh, fixed undercarriage. It's very light, uh, quite a powerful engine and it's capable of some uh, pretty extreme uh, kind of aerobatic maneuvers. It's... I'm not going to say it's very fast uh, but it can it can certainly kind of hold its own. Um, now one thing that you'll see here, these are all of the different skins you can get for the, the Kristen Eagle and there is more skins than you can shake a, sti a stick at. Uh, you're really not going to be kind of uh, lost for choice uh, with some of the, the skins that are available here. Um, just kind of like scrolling through these. Uh, there's all sorts of different ones, um, you know, all sorts of colours and variations. A lot of them are the same, um, kind of same sort of pattern with the eagle down the side. Um, there's cool things here like the um, uh, MiG-28 skin, uh, there's the F-14 kind of uh, skin there as well which is pretty funky. Um, a couple of my favourites are the Red Baron skin uh, that you can see here and then there's the what they call the SC-5 kind of Royal Air Force skin there which is uh, which is also also really cool. Um, so as you can see just uh, over here, we um, sorry just kind of uh, slewing the camera around here, I've created a little bit of an air race um, kind of track here uh, which I might have a little fling around and show you how the aircraft maneuvers. Um, I've copied this from something I saw online, um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, so yeah, anyways, let's uh, jump in the cockpit and see what this thing's like to fly. Um, so the cockpit's actually really quite nice. Um, the detail, the textures, everything in here is really nice. Uh, nothing kind of looks rushed or out of place. You know, there's no kind of like. Uh, bad texturing or you know kind of like uh, rough square edges and stuff like that. Um, it is dual seat so this is the main pilot seat when you're flying solo there is a, a big sign that says uh, solo rear seat only. I guess it's to do with the uh, center of gravity or center of balance on the aircraft. Um, you can move into the, um, the front seat uh, which is quite cool as well you get closer to your gauges and stuff like this uh, but primarily it is supposed to be flown from the from the back seat. Um, now the cockpit, like I said, all looks really nice. Uh, there's some nice lighting and stuff you can get in here as well. Um, so we'll go through uh, through the startup. We'll taxi out and talk about taxiing, take off, uh, have a fly around, and maybe fly this little uh, kind of uh, air race gate thing that I, I set up over there. So um, the startup is really straightforward. So you switch on the battery. Um, you can switch on the radio, although apparently you don't do that until after you've started the engine, uh, and you turn on the alternator. Uh, now we've got lots of controls down over here, uh, so you've got your mixture here, uh, which you leave in fully rich, which is pushed in, um, and then you've got your uh, prop pitch. Um, it is a constant speed propeller, much like the P-51, um, so it changes the kind of angle of the blades in order to change the kind of uh, thrust and stuff like that. Uh, you do have an elevator trim. Um, I might talk about this a little bit later on because it, it, it's very odd in how it works. Um, you, you can change it there, um, but one thing I found is that you can trim, uh, but it doesn't chain, take effect on the aircraft until you actually manually move the stick. Um, I think that's a, a bug or something that they've got going on there at the moment. Um, there are a few weird things going on with the aircraft, but it has only just come, uh, been released, so I'm sure a lot of this stuff will be sorted out. Um, and then down here towards the bottom, you've got uh, your fuel cutoff switch and the fuel pump for, for starting it up as well. Um, now one thing that is really cool, if you want to know how to start the aircraft and, and uh, kind of take off and landing procedures, it's all on these little cards here. Uh, so if in doubt, just read these um, and it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to start the aircraft, so um, that's absolutely brilliant. 
Uh, so to start up procedure, like I said there, so battery on, alternator on, uh, mixture fully rich, uh, prop pitch in, uh, fuel uh, cut off on, we even get a little thing in the corner there saying fuel valve open, and then we'll pump this, it's about three times, yep, and then fuel pressure OK. We turn the mags into both, and then we simply kind of click this key into start, the engine should fire up, and then we'll, uh, we'll be ready to go. There we go, so as easy as that. And, uh, kind of strange starting sound, but um, it's not bad, you know, <laughs> it's alright. Uh, so the cockpit lighting, these are your cockpit uh, lighting switches and external lighting. So you've got nav lights uh, there, which uh, that's a blinky thing on the tail. And then you've got a series of uh, red and white lights inside. This is your taxi light, which is really bright, uh, so we might leave that one off, it's, it's quite garish. Um, and then there's a little rotator over here for uh, your upfront kind of cockpit illumination lights, which is, uh, which is quite funky as well. Uh, right, okay, so we'll turn the radio on there. In order to actually get the radio box on, if we pull the stick out of the way, there's a little kind of thing here which you just rotate and the radio comes on. And then there's a rotator here for uh, kind of programming frequencies and stuff like that to radio, but we're not going to mess around with that at the moment. Uh, so what we'll do is that we'll taxi out to the runway and then we'll uh, get taking off. So last thing we'll do is, is close the canopy here, it's quite simple. Um, there's a, a kind of little bar here that says lift canopy, you just click that. The thing closes and then you lock the canopy with this thing here and uh, you get a lovely little sign here that says locked, unlocked, locked. Just so that there's uh, no doubt that the canopy is actually locked. And uh, the last switch down here is a little air conditioning switch so that you can kind of get some air blowing on you. But you know, it's a nice feature, but unfortunately, it's not uh, fully implemented in DCS yet. So to taxi out, um, it has differential braking. Um, although I have found I had to play with the axis quite a bit in order to get the differential braking working. Um, but really, you don't need to use the differential brakes. Um, it has a steerable tail wheel. Um, if we actually kind of uh, have a look down here, and I, I think we might be able to zoom in on this a bit. Uh, so the, the tail wheel here is sprung to the rudder, um, so when you're taxiing away, uh, the tail wheel moves along with, with the rudder, um, which is which is quite funky. It's a cool little thing. Uh, one thing I found though, if you put in too much rudder, um, it, uh, it kind of starts spinning around backwards and the aircraft starts doing strange things, uh, so you don't want to put in too much rudder when you're um, when you're taxiing. So we'll get moving here, and then as you can see, you can actually put it a bit too far over, and then it, it stops having so much effect on on the turn. So you just want little movements, just to kind of get the tail wheel moving, kind of as you'd like it to. Try and reset the camera here. Excuse me. So we'll uh, go ahead and taxi out this way. It sounds not bad on the aircraft, the uh, engine sounds like a like a buzz saw, but I guess that's what it kind of sounds like much in real life. Uh, the textures again really quite nice, the, the way that the lighting kind of works along with the, the skins and stuff like that is quite nice. You can see the individual kind of uh, like rivets and stuff like that in the wing and the, the bending in the, in the metal and that on the surfaces. So we'll uh, continue our taxi out here. Fun thing with uh, tail drags is it's hard to see where you're going when you're taxiing, so you have to kind of like look out and about a little bit. So just using the tow brakes to uh, slow down before we turn onto the runway here. Now this little star thing that you uh, see out the left hand side, uh, that's your uh, ADI, or kind of a, a, a horizon <laughs> reference point thing. Uh, so when you fly in straight level it's on the horizon, uh, when you're vertical, when you're at kind of 45 degrees you can reference um, the aircraft uh, position to the horizon by looking at your left wing. Because uh, there's, there's a slip gauge here, uh, but there is no um, artificial horizon. You've got your turn and bank indicator, you've got a G indicator, airspeed, altitude. Um, these are all to do with uh, fuel, fuel pressure, oil pressure quantities. And this is your uh, constant speed RPM gauge, uh, so you can kind of set your propeller by using your uh, propeller RPM. Cool. 
So we'll uh, take the runway here. Now one thing I have found with this aircraft, it is very, very twitchy. Um, it can go from being quite a pleasant aircraft to fly to being uh, completely a complete bitch to try and handle. Um, but it's easy to recover, it's easy to get into spins, it's easy to get out of spins. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and power up here and take off. Just full power in. I found it doesn't really take a, a great deal of rudder input in order to keep it going straight. Um, and as soon as the tail wheel pops off, you just kind of a little bit of back pressure on the stick and she comes up. Uh, you can't be too rough, you can't manhandle this aircraft too much, otherwise it will snap and spin a lot. Uh, so we'll just back off on the RPMs here a little bit. Uh, just kind of level off. So just to kind of talk about how the trim was working. Um, so without touching the trim at all, uh, or touching the stick at all, the nose is going down a lot. So I trim all the way back on the, on the trim switch, um, but that kind of has very little effect. If I move the stick and let go, uh, then it's kind of trimmed very heavy nose up. So I trim all the way nose down. As you can see, the, the trim handle there is going all the way down. I move the stick and let go, and then it takes effect. So that, that is quite a little weird kind of control bug. So just be careful when, when trimming it that, um, that the effects that you're actually trimming in won't really take effect until you've moved the stick. Um, now also another kind of um, feature, a little bit of a bug, is with the damage model. At the moment it's, um, it's very basic. Uh, you can prop strike, it won't hurt the prop. Uh, you can bang control surfaces into the ground pretty hard and nothing will break. Um, but I imagine that's all stuff that will um, that'll be fixed uh, kind of in time. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, line up here and come in and, and kind of have a quick uh, blast around my little air track here just to show what this is like and hopefully I don't end up killing myself. So we'll go full power Full, uh, full mixture, full rich, full prop, and then we'll uh, go smoke on, and then we'll, we'll fly this little course I've got set up here just for a bit of fun. And then just as we're passing the gate, we'll go smoke on. So it should be smoke on now. Yep, you can see it on the mirror. It's really kind of a little cool, funky little mirror thing that's going on there. We'll fly through the first gate, just wait a little bit, and then we'll pitch up over the top. Just look for our point of reference coming over the top. This thing is really manoeuvrable, but uh, it gets tempting to pull it very hard. Uh, but if you start pulling it very hard, uh, then the, the thing will kind of snap roll on you and break, and you really don't want that to happen. So we'll go into um, sh the chicane. See, wow, a little bit of adverse Yoda, and then a hard. Oh, she's fighting me quite hard here. A hard bank. Wow, there we go. Yeah, she's uh, she's fighting me very, very hard there. That one, that was pretty messy. Not very happy with that. I've done that much better. And then we'll fly through this gate, and then we'll do another loop, or kind of immolation, I guess it is, half loop. One thing with the smoke though, it does linger and then it's hard to see where you're going once you've been through it. Now one thing that's quite cool as well is the reflection on the um, on the fuel filler cap on the front. Uh, it does seem to reflect everything which is really really awesome. I really like that. So we'll do a constant turn here. Come back online. Straighten up. And then we'll do one more lap and then we'll uh, do some aerobatic -y stuff. Um, so just while I'm doing this, um, kind of share my point of view on the Chris Nickel 2 and its position in DCS. Um, now, I'm all for this. I think it's a great module. It's really fun to fly. It's a proper kind of basic stick and rudder aircraft, a lot like the Yak-52. Apart from it's a, a lot more maneuverable. Um, you can do lots of silly things in this aircraft. That's a really, you know, kind of quite a lot of fun. Um, now, I, you know, I, I do kind of see where the purists are coming from, saying that you know this is a, a combat simulator and it should be focusing on combat aircraft. Um, but for Magnitude Three, um, you know, this is a module that they've been using to hone their uh, kind of flight modeling skills um, for getting their, you know, kind of like a, 
external flight models tuned for things like the, the Corsair that were upcoming. Uh, so, you know, it does have a purpose. Um, believe it or not, VEAO, um, I think they actually did an extra 300 and they demonstrated that uh, at a Duxford Air Show once uh, to demonstrate uh, kind of the, the flight modeling that they'd been doing. Um, although they, they chose never to release the aircraft. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing concerning, you know, kind of what happened to the Hawk. <laughs> uh, but, you know, other kind of uh, developers have created things like um, like these aerobatics aircraft, but then chose not to release them. Um, now, you know, from my own personal point of view, um, this aircraft being in DCS, I, I think it is just a good thing. And I think it's also a good reference point for, um, for the flight modeling in DCS. So you've got other flight sims, you know, you've got things like uh, X-Plane and uh, Microsoft Flight Sim and all the other things, even though, you know, they're, they're very kind of rare and, and uh, few, far between at the moment. But there's a lot more people who will fly things like the Chris Eagle um, and the Pit Special, which is very similar to this. And then there is that fly things like the F-18 or the A-10. And they can, you know, the people that actually fly this, and there's a lot more people that have flown this aircraft, can fly this in DCS and say that's really close to the real thing you know that's actually you know like a really really great representation of the flight model um, you can also cross-reference this to other simulators so you can fly you know like the Chris and Eagle in DCS and then you can fly it the next plane 11 if there's a, a version of it in there you know and you, you can cross-reference to see how fantastic actually the, the flight modeling is in DCS and I've never flown a flight sim like DCS in the past. You know, the, the flight modelling in this is superb. And I honestly hope that they bring in more aircraft like this in the future. Um, simply because this is an incredibly fun flight sim to fly. You know, I really do enjoy the military aspect of it. And it's what got me into DCS. But when, when you think about it, one of the most popular servers in DCS at the moment is the Virtual Aerobatics server. There's more people flying on that than just about pretty much, you know, kind of any other server night to night. And I really enjoy just taking off an aircraft and having a fly about, just kind of, you know, flying about the scenery and, you know, kind of just practicing my stick and rudder skills. You know, it's why I have the, the Yak-52, it's not a combat aircraft. It's slow as hell, it doesn't really go far, uh, very far, very fast. But it's a great aircraft just for flying stick and rudder and, you know, having a bit of fun. And this is another kind of brilliant example. It's got a, a fantastic flight model, it, it flies really well. Um, you can do really crazy, silly things in this um, and get yourself in, in quite a lot of kind of trouble, uh, you know, with spins and stalls and stuff like this. And it's also very, very easy to get out of it again. So, you, you know, it, it's a brilliant kind of training aircraft for, uh, you know, kind of getting into situations and getting out of them and getting into silly kind of stall spins and stuff like this where you can kind of flat spin and then just kind of rudder into it, nose down, and then kind of get out of it. So, you know, you can do lots of silly things and you, you can learn from from flying these aircraft on how to actually do it properly and, you know, have a good time flying. So that's, you know, kind of basically why I think that the Chris Eagle is a, a good module and a welcome addition to DCS. Now, I understand that there is a lot of people in the community that will wholeheartedly disagree with me and there's a lot of people that won't listen to reason with things like this. They'll, they'll just be, you know, complete combat purist saying no they should just be doing military aircraft and don't want stuff like this but you know I, I honestly can see why Eagle Dynamics have allowed this aircraft to come into DCS and you know why you know other people do want this and I'm one of them you know I, I welcome this aircraft I think Magnitude 3 has done a fantastic job with it it's a lot of fun to fly and uh, I for one would probably spend a a lot of time just kind of mucking about in this aircraft when I've you know kind of got like a, a spare 10-15 minutes just to kind of take off and, and have a little bit of a fly around so um, yeah that that's oops, whoa hello yeah that's probably one of the worst landings I've ever done in my life 
uh, but uh, there's also kind of big problems with the suspension on this aircraft at the moment in that there is no suspension uh, so bouncing is quite a <laughs> regular occurrence apologies about that I can do better landings uh, but I'm not going to right now um, so yeah uh, that's basically my thoughts on the on the Chris and Eagle um, I'm happy it's here um, I for one am you know kind of happy to add it to my, my collection and also it's cheap as chips it is one of the cheapest modules in DCS at the moment and I think that you get, you actually do get a hell of a lot of aircraft for the for the price um, so you know for those of you out there who enjoy flying and uh, just kind of enjoy doing a bit of sticker rudder time or enjoy just flying like the World War II stuff just go please go ahead pick this up you won't be sorry um, you know the aircraft does have a lot of uses, aerobatic, air racing, you know, formation flying, stick and rudder practice, it, it's, it can do all sorts. So what I'm going to do is just taxi on in here as soon as I can find the taxiway. <laughs> There's uh, some big brakes in the uh, in the old runway here. But uh, yeah, in fact I might just uh, pull over and to see it I'm sick of waffling. So. So just stop this here um, to kill the engine just turn off the mags and then the engine stops bang just like that unlock the canopy open it up just by clicking the bar here and then that opens up and that's it that's the Chris Eagle 2 um, I hope that you've enjoyed this you know definitely consider this aircraft if you enjoy uh, flying props and if you enjoy stick and rudder flight and doing silly things and being able to get away with it then you know don't dismiss this out of hand you know think about it have a look at it um, there's a lot of other people that have you know kind of done videos featuring this um, the damage model isn't there yet um, I guess that's something that they'll still be working on um, I've got a lot of confidence that it's something that they will sort out um, but it is a lot of fun to fly the flight model is fantastic uh, the aircraft looks great it flies great um, yeah, and that's really my final thought on it. So I'll say thank you very much. I hope that you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.